now we are testing the higher functions of his brain. The first thing we will do is to test uh, the language. Um, we'll see how fluent he in uh, his language. Can you say something? The weather is beautiful today. Good. And uh, now, what's the name of uh, this thing on your this hand? Is this is a watch. And what about this one here? This is the tool, uh, a button. A button. And uh, what's the name of this? This is a thumb. This is a thumb. Great. Now, can you repeat after me? The sun is bright today. The sun is bright today. Fantastic. Now, I'll give you something to read, and then you will read one sentence from this okay. book. The fire matter is a very interesting number. Good. And I'll give you a piece of paper, and please write for me a sentence there. Thank you. Now, the last thing about the language is to see his reception and uh, his production, i.e. expression, uh, which we really tested when we doing all of these uh, tests on the language because we asked him a question and he understood what we meant and then he gave a proper answer. That is the expression. So there is no point in repeating it. But if we would repeat it, I will do. What's your name? My name is Muhammad. So he understood that we were asking him about his name and then uh, he gave us the right uh, answer. Thank you. Now we'll test other component of uh, higher function, which is uh, memory. I will ask him about uh, immediate uh, memory, um, uh, things that he, uh, about things he did today. So what time did you wake up this morning? 7.30. 7.30. And uh, what did you have for lunch yesterday? Uh, where were you last Friday? I was in our farm. You were in our farm. That's, that's uh, good. So we tested the immediate memory and the remote memory. I'll give you a number and I want you to remember it and then I will ask you to tell me what was that number. Um, uh, it's a telephone number 5532760. Can you repeat it for me? 5532760. Great. And um, I'll ask you about uh, what is the national day of Jordan? It's on the 25th of May, uh, 1946. Great. And then what was the day of your birth? 31st of January, 1996. Great. Third component of the higher functions, we'll ask about the orientation. I will ask him, do you know who I am? Yes, you are Dr. William. Okay. And uh, where are we now? In the clinic, and what's the time? It's uh, nine thirty. Now the last uh, item to be uh, tested in the higher mental functions would be the uh, few other cognitive functions like calculations, for example. Can you tell me what's five by five? Twenty-five. Okay. What's ten plus ten plus thirteen? Thirty-three. Great. Now can you uh, do for me? 100 and take out of it uh, seven at a time and go backwards. Okay, 192, now I'll give you a few of a few things and you tell me what's the odd one out. Okay. A door, mm -hmm. a window, mm -hmm. a floor, mm -hmm. and an apple. An apple. An apple. Why? Great. Now we will test. Uh, his reasoning, I will ask him something and ask him why this is uh, what it is. Uh, during the day when the sun is shining and bright, which is longer, your shadow at midday or in the afternoon? In the afternoon. Why? Because the sun is not bright above me. It's inside us, so the shadow is bright. Thank you. And uh, um, we know uh, we have to check or look at his personality and behavior, as, as we can see that his behavior is, is quite good and uh, he's uh, uh, reasonable and uh, collected. The sixth nerve, that's the lateral rectus. Can you look to your left? Can you look to your right? So both lateral recti are uh, good. Now we will test the rest of the movements, i.e. Uh, those part of them are supplied by the third and part of them are supplied by the fourth 
cranial nerve. Can you look up, down? Can you look up and to the left? Okay. Can you look up and to the right? Can you look down and to the left? And down and to the right. Good. Now what I will do, I'll do the accommodation test. Is I bring my finger into his uh, uh, visual fields and ask him to concentrate on the tip of my finger and see if his eyes converge to the tip of my uh, finger like so. You can see that his eyes converge and uh, this is a normal function. Now we will do the confrontation test to test his visual fields and um, I usually use a pin with a red head because he can appreciate uh, red lights better than anything else. I will come from as far uh, laterally as uh, presumed, uh, 60 degrees up and nasal and 100 degrees lateral side. So we will uh, start by placing my hand in the mid distance between me and him, ask him to close his right eye. I will close or put your hand on it. I will close my left eye. Then I will come from mid distance and from out and tell you tell me when you see the red knob. Okay. And keep looking at my nose. Okay. So his visual fields on the left side are uh, good. We should repeat the same test on the other uh, side, which we will not. Now I will present him objects at the same time in his temporal fields to see whether he can uh, see them uh, at the same time or uh, he has visual inattention in which uh, he can only see what happens on one side. So I'm putting my hands in Temporal fields at the same time, yes. and which hand is moving? The right hand. And now? Left hand. And now? Both. Both. So now he he we know that he doesn't have visual inattention. Mm -hmm. The third component of testing the optic nerve is uh, the fundoscopic examination. I take an ophthalmoscope, and with my right eye, I look at the fundus of his right eye. You, this is because I want to keep my mouth away from his face. So I'll go there and with my right eye, I look inside his eye into his fundus, look at the vessels, look at the disc, whether it is flat, if it is uh, normal or he has papilledema, all these things and you have to report it and then you come out. And you repeat the same for the other uh, eye. We will do the light reflex since we are at the eyes now and we will take a torch and I will shine it into his left eye and look what happens to the pupil. The pupil became small. So I come out, I place my hand on his face like this. So I shine on the left and I look what happens to the right. So here we are, we do this and I'm looking at the other pupil. Normally the other pupil should constrict also. So this is the indirect response which is normal in this patient. To start with, we have to assess the level of consciousness. This is done through um, measuring three components, one to do with the eye opening, the other one is the verbal response, the third is the motor uh, response. A normal person, awake person, would score 15 out of 15. The lowest score you would get is three out of 15. In matter of fact, a dead person would score three out of 15. Now we will see how we can uh, get all uh, the components and measure his level of consciousness. Uh, we will try to test the three components now. We can see that his eyes are open, so we'll give him spontaneously, so we'll give him four marks for that. And then we will ask him uh, a question and we will see what sort of response he will give us. What's uh, your height in centimeters? 185 centimeters. 185, so that's an appropriate response, so he gets the full mark, five marks for that. And then we will uh, try to ask him to do a motor uh, function and see what he can do. Can you make a fist and put your hand in front of your face? Okay, great. So he gets uh, six for that. So six, five, and four 
makes 15, so he's 15 over 15 on the Glasgow comb. 2 and V3, and we're testing V1, which is there. Can you feel this? Mm -hmm. Can you feel this? Yes. This is 2, and this is V3. Can yes. you feel this? Yes. So he now uh, able to feel uh, those uh, three. Uh, we leave the pin aside in the left cornea, so ask him to, like, to look to the right far away and then open your eye wide and then I come from there open 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 and then and now I touch the cornea and he blinks so he has a good uh, cornea reflex so I'll ask him to open your mouth put your tongue out and then I touch do you feel this mm -hmm. do you feel this mm -hmm. so he can feel uh, the uh, anterior two-thirds of his tongue now we finished with the sensory component of the trigeminal and now we want to test uh, the motor component of the fit and here we can test either the temporalis muscle or we can test the masseter muscle let's test the masseter muscles the masseter muscles are here i'll ask him clench your teeth please there and i can see them contracting here so his trigeminal nerve motor component is good of course, we'll do this for the other side, and then we'll come to the last of the function, which is the jaw jerk. This is normally absent. So what we will try to do is loosen your jaw, let it relax, put your fingers on it like this, open them up, and let your jaw loose, 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 loose. And then I do like this. If uh, it is uh, uh, normal, then it's absent. So it is normal here because we did not get the uh, jaw jerk.